For over three decades, some of MMA's greatest fighters have come from Hawaii, the Aloha State, earning a reputation for some of the toughest competitors in the sport's history. Today, we look at some of the most accomplished Hawaiians to step foot in the cage, from a heavyweight powerhouse to one of the greatest lightweights of all time. Welcome to the INC, and these are the 5 Greatest Hawaiian MMA Fighters. Number 5. Elemele McFarlane There was little to suggest Elemele McFarlane would reach such heights in her career, largely due to the unusual way it started. McFarlane made her debut in 2015, when she took on, 0-2, Katie Castro for the Explode Fight series in California. The so-called Soccer Mom KO went viral on social media, leading Bellator boss Scott Coker to sign the fighter and capitalize on her notoriety. What the company didn't realize was just how legitimate McFarlane was. The fighter had been a longtime student of UFC veteran Liz Carmouche, as well as a jiu-jitsu brown belt under Eddie Bravo. What was planned as a one-off appearance became a six-fight on beaten streak, and when Bellator announced plans for a women's flyweight title, McFarlane's name quickly entered the mix. McFarlane's big moment came in 2017, when she took future Invicta champion Emily Ducote at Bellator 186. McFarlane used her larger frame to neutralize Ducote's offense, before submitting the Californian on her way to company history. Got it, it's all over! Champion. McFarlane proved the win wasn't a fluke, overwhelming opponents with her grappling on her way to four title defenses, but it was her win over Valerie Letourneau that proved the most emotional. McFarlane submitting the former UFC title challenger in front of her home crowd in Honolulu, the first time a major MMA promotion had held an event in Hawaii. Although McFarlane's reign ended in 2020, she remains a staple of the Bellator Flyweight Top 10 and, at the time of writing, still holds the record for the most wins by a female in company history. Not bad for a fighter signed off a social media meme. Number 4. Ray Cooper III It's rare to find a son that surpasses their father, but that's exactly what Ray Cooper III has done during his MMA career. Ray Cooper Jr. was a staple of Hawaiian MMA in the early 2000s holding notable wins over Jake Shields and Hermes Franca, while fighting almost exclusively in his home state. Initially, it looked like RC3 would follow the same path, amassing a 13-5 record and generating little fanfare outside of local fans, until he was approached to compete in the inaugural PFL season in 2018. Entering the contest as an underdog, Cooper quickly won fans with his aggressive fighting style and knockout power, including a pair of wins over his dad's old rival, Jake Shields. This led Cooper to a spot in the welterweight final, only to succumb to eventual champion Magomed Magomed Karamov, a fighter so good they named him twice. With Double MK failing to make the knockout stages, 2019 gave Cooper a chance to avenge his final loss, and after a knockout win over Chris Curtis, took on UFC veteran David Michaud, where Cooper's trademark power showed itself again midway through the second round. While most fighters would be satisfied with a million dollar prize, it was just the start for Cooper. Continuing his form in 2021, including a win over former UFC star Rory McDonald, this led him to a rematch with Magomed Karamov in the season finale, where Cooper put his 2018 demons to rest in spectacular fashion. Big right hands from Ray Cooper! Cooper currently holds a 25-8 record and is regarded as one of the most successful fighters in PFL history. Number 3. Travis Brown There was once a time Travis Brown was one of the most feared heavyweights in MMA. Brown was a comparative latecomer to MMA. After a promising basketball career fell through, Hapa attended his first jiu-jitsu class at the age of 26 before making his pro debut a year later. Following a nine-fight winning streak, Brown was signed to the UFC in 2010, and after making easy work of his first two opponents, launched himself into the limelight against Stefan Struve at UFC 130. Oh my goodness! It is all over! Wow! 
Over the next three years, Brown would become the heavyweight division's dark horse, winning five on his next six fights including knockouts of Josh Barnett and Alistair Overeem. While Brown's offense was potent, it was his defense that made the headlines, deterring his opponent's takedown attempts by hammering elbows to the side of their head, knocking them out in the process. The move would become synonymous with Brown during his career, and to this day is still referred to as Travis Brown Elbows. By 2014, Brown had claimed performance bonuses in his past four fights and was rewarded with a number one contender match against Fabricio Verdum at Fight Night Orlando. The match proved a step too far as Verdum breached Brown's takedown defense on his way to a one-sided decision. It proved an unwanted turning point as the fighter embarked on a loss of form that saw his durability come under increased scrutiny. Although, he did play a role in ending Todd Grisham's UFC broadcasting career. Get out of there, Travis! Brown hasn't competed in MMA since UFC 213, but his biggest win came outside the cage as the fighter began a relationship with MMA legend Ronda Rousey, the couple marrying in 2017 before giving birth to their first child four years later. Number 2. Max Holloway Max Holloway has spent the past decade defining what it means to be a fighter's fighter. Holloway was thrown in the deep end almost immediately. After just four fights on the regional scene, the 20-year-old accepted a short-notice call to compete in the UFC, losing his debut to future champion Dustin Poirier. Despite flashes of brilliance, Holloway's early tenure was defined by inconsistency and youthful exuberance, including a loss to pre-fame Conor McGregor in 2013. From then on, Holloway never looked back. Over the next three years, the fighter amassed a nine-fight winning streak that saw him beat some of Featherweight's biggest names, including wins over Charles Oliveira, Cub Swanson, and Ricardo Lamas. During this time, Holloway earned kudos for his elite-level striking and aggression, as well as holding the distinction of never being dropped in his entire career. 2017 proved Holloway's breakout year. After beating Anthony Pettis for the interim title, the fighter accepted a match with featherweight king Jose Aldo at UFC 212, where Holloway silenced the hometown crowd to become one of the youngest champions in UFC history. That'll do it! Max Holloway! Max Holloway is the undisputed UFC featherweight champion! Holloway bested Aldo again in a rematch six months later while wins over Frankie Edgar and Brian Ortega confirmed his place as one of 145's all-time greats. Holloway is set to face the Korean Zombie later this year and is still regarded as one of MMA's highest level strikers, something the fighter has been known to boast about even mid-fight. Number 1. BJ Penn while Max Holloway's achievements are worthy of kudos, his road to success wouldn't have been paved without BJ Penn. Much like Holloway, Penn's early tenure was a baptism of fire. After becoming the first American to win gold at the World Jiu-Jitsu Champions, Penn was signed to the UFC in 2001, and after a series of spectacular knockouts, was granted a title shot in only his fourth pro fight. After two failed bids at lightweight, Penn was given a welterweight title shot against Matt Hughes at UFC 46. Hughes was unbeaten in 13 fights and expected to make easy work of his undersized opponent, only for Penn to outgrapple the wrestling standout in one of the biggest upsets in UFC history. He's done! It's over! It's over! We have a new welterweight champion! A new welterweight champion! Penn's reign, however, would be short lived, as the fighter left the UFC over a contract dispute to compete for Japan's K1 where he claimed wins over the likes of Takanori Gomi and Hanzo Gracie. During this time, the lightweight pen proved his all-comers attitude by competing in the company's heavyweight Grand Prix, losing to future UFC champion Lyoto Machida. When the UFC revived lightweight in 2006, Penn quickly followed suit, and after avenging his loss to Jens Pulver, took on Joe Stevenson for the vacant title dominating the Ultimate Fighter standout and becoming only the second man to win titles in two weight classes. Over the next two years, Penn would embark on one of the most dominant reigns in division history, besting the likes of Sean Shirk and Diego Sanchez with comparative ease, thanks to his mix of explosivity and elite-level grappling. The run led Penn to be considered the pound-for-pound -pound best fighter in the world, with Dana White citing the Hawaiian as the first man to legitimize the UFC's lower weight classes. 
Penn would lose the title in an upset to Frankie Edgar at UFC 112, a match that proved a turning point as Penn went on to win just one of his last 11 fights, his later tenure marred by a refusal to retire and his increasing troubled behavior outside the cage. Despite the unsavory later years, Penn's status as a dominant lightweight pioneer remains his greatest achievement, something rewarded in 2015 with his induction to the UFC Hall of Fame. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. Kendall Grove used his Ultimate Fighter win to become a staple of the UFC middleweight division, before challenging for titles in both Bellator and KSW. Danny Gay is considered one of the featherweight division's toughest outs, and with knockouts like this, it's easy to see why. Yeah! Tila Tuli spun his UFC 1 appearance into a career as an actor. Or should that be shill? Sweet onion chicken teriyaki with jalapenos and banana peppers. Now you put that with this, turkey BLT, bam! There's some serious culinary fusion. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and check out the all-new Philly cheesesteak from your nearest Subway. 